Part 5. Let's continue with the original article about the Ajis. Where were we? Oh yeah. We just discovered how Shadow Israel was in the Roman army at the exact same time our ancestors were being killed and deported by the Roman army. What's that, little Miss Ivy? You know what? I think you're right. They probably are the exact same armada of Shazu mercenaries who worship YHW3 who were moving across the landscape and some of them took up shop within Esau's borders we discovered in our Shadow Israel history series. You guys remember, right? When we proved the Edomites craftily swapped out our God's worship for their God's worship as an end result of our ancestors forcibly converting them. That would take care of their location and looking like the Syrian clones at the same time. Know what I mean, Burn? Oh yeah, we also discovered how the Arashis replicated those who were responsible in our ancestors being deported in the first place. And a shipload of other history overlapping too. So let's continue with the article for more clues. Listen closely. Quote, no evidence. It doesn't say a little bit of evidence. It don't say a lot of evidence. It says no evidence has yet been found of a Jewish presence in antiquity in Germany beyond its Roman border, nor in Eastern Europe. In Gaul and Germany itself, with the possible exception of Tree and Cologne, the archaeological evidence suggests at most a fleeting presence of very few Jews, primarily I-T-I-N-E-R-A-N-T, -E traders or artisans. Stop! Bingo! As you can plainly hear, for them to tell us earlier, that the Aji's existence began in the unholy Roman Empire around a thousand and then tell us quote no evidence has yet been found of a Jewish presence in antiquity in Germany beyond its Roman borders nor in Eastern Europe it can only mean two things the Aji's disappeared for around 700 years off the face of the earth we can say that Heck, I just did, right? Or we can be like Little Miss Ivy and utilize everything we know into one thought process and deduce the Ajis are new and fresh people with a matrix of deception and expansionist program downloaded in them. You know, just like the Genesis 1 first creations were. But am I the only person who said, hmm, what? are the odds when I read quote the archaeological evidence suggests at most a fleeting presence of very few Jews primarily I-T-I-N-E-R-A-N-T traders or artisans I mean seeing Google will tell us the word I-T-I-N-E-R-A-N-T means quote traveling from place to place wandering, roving, roaming, touring, nomadic, gypsies, migrant, globe trotting, jet setting, and seeing we are hot on the trail of a nation with those exact same characteristics? You know, traveling salesmen. Well, what are the odds? We are not talking about the exact same people, just in different ways. But here is the part that should break all Israeli apologists' backs. Quote, The Romans did not distinguish between Jew inside and outside of the land of Israel slash Judea. They collected an annual temple tax from Jews both in and outside of Israel. Listen up, listen up, listen up. The revolts in and suppressing of diaspora communities in Egypt, Libya, and Crete in 115 through 117 CE 
had a severe impact on the Jewish diaspora. A substantial Jewish population emerged in northern Gaul by the Middle Ages, but Jewish communities existed in 465 CE in Brittany, in 524 CE in Valence, and in 533 CE in Orleans. Stop! Bingo! Why all the puzzle faces? First, remember the Egyptians, well it's not the Egyptians still, I, I gotta stop saying that. It's the, um, it's the Egyptian, uh, ah, it, it's on one of, it's on one of the, the, uh, images. It was on a couple of, images. I tried to duplicate it. That still, but if you understand, if you've been following us and conjunctulating with us, you, you know the understanding, you, you know what I'm talking about, uh, the steel that I'm talking about. But that still proved these revolts were shadow Israel based out of Libya and not our ancestors. Let me go back and say it again. First, remember, the Egyptian steel proves these revolts were shadow Israel based out of Libya and not our ancestors. But our enemies did use these revolts to sway the Romans to remove us once and for all. Second, this proves beyond a shadow of a doubt. After the Romans threw down on us, our ancestors didn't have the freedom to move about in the midst or able to travel through the Roman Empire to get to Western or Central Europe in the first place. Heck, we were being fed to carnivorous beasts for sport beginning at this time. But is little Miss Ivy the only person who finds it interesting? They jumped from 115 AD all the way to 465 AD and then said, quote, a substantial Jewish population emerged in northern Gaul by the Middle Ages, which to me can only mean N-A-F. Yep, new and fresh. Now sit back and listen to how they pin the tail on the jackals for us. Quote, Charlemagne's expansion of the Frankish Empire around 800, including northern Italy and Rome, brought on a brief period of stability and unity in France. This created opportunity for Jewish merchants to settle again north of the Alps. Charlemagne granted the Jews freedom similar to those once enjoyed under the Roman Empire. In addition, Jews from southern Italy fleeing religious persecution <laughs> began, we're about to find out what the religious persecution was. Fleeing religious persecution began to move into Central Europe. Returning to Frankish land, many Jewish merchants took up occupations in finance and commerce, including money lending or usury. Church legislation banned Christians from lending money in exchange for interest. Listen up, listen up. From Charlemagne's time to the present. What? From Charlemagne's time to the present. Jewish life in Northern Europe is well documented. Stop. They knew and fresh models. They wanted the world to be documented. Bingo. That's what it said. Wait a minute. There it is. The new and fresh models they wanted the world to be documented. Bingo. That's what I wanted to say. But let's continue. Listen to how this is worded to protect the new and fresh guilty. Quote, by the 11th century, when Rashi of Troyes wrote his commentaries, Jews in what came to be known as Azhikanaz, were known for their H-A-L-A-K-H-I-C learning, we're going to get to that later, and Talmudic studies. They were criticized by Sephardim and other Jewish scholars in Islamic lands for their lack of expertise in Jewish, Jewish prudence, the denim, and general ignorance of Hebrew linguistics and literature. Yeah, they didn't know the, the Torah. No, these these cats brand new, man. It's because they were different and distinct, fresh, and brand new cash trade 
of clones, man. Give them a break, people. Give them a break. Listen up, listen up. Yiddish emerged as a result of Judo Latin language contact with various high German vernaculars in the medieval period. It is a Germanic language written in Hebrew letters. It wasn't Hebrew, twist it over, you know, and put a little German into it. Uh uh. It is a Germanic language written in Hebrew letters and heavily influenced by Hebrew or Aramaic with some elements of a Romance and later Slavic languages. <laughs> All right. Under high and late Middle Age migrations. Listen up. Quote By the 11th century, Jewish settlers moving from Southern Europe and Middle Eastern centers appear to have begun to settle in north in the north especially along the Rhine often in response to new economic opportunities and at the invitation of local Christian rulers thus Baldwin V Count of Flanders invited Jacob Ben Y and his fellow Jews to settle in his lands and soon after the Norman conquest of England William the Conqueror likewise extended the welcome to continental Jews to take up residence there. Bishop Rudger H. called on the Jews of Mitz to, re to relocate to Speyer. Listen up, listen up, listen up, listen up. In all of these decisions, the idea that Jews had the know-how and capacity to jumpstart the economy, improve revenues, and in large trade seems to have played a prominent role. Boy, he talking about anti-Semitic. Yeah, stereotypical. <laughs> Let's keep on. Quote, typically Jews relocated close to the market and churches in town centers where Though they came under the authority of both royal and esoterical power, listen up, they were accorded administrative autonomy. Stop! Bingo! I don't know about you, but it sure sounds as though their trade cash reputation precedes them. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's it for this video. My God's will. <laughs> Look for the next.